Hello everyone, Mark here. Welcome back to my garage. So, this is just a very short video, and the first of a long series of building a kit of castings. Um, what I've done is um, I bought a casting kit from the company PM Research over in America. Now, if you follow uh, Joe Pye or Quinn of Blondie Hacks, you will know that they recently uh, both did the uh, PM1 steam engine, the stationary mill engine that they do. And Joe Pye has recently started a build on doing a miniature lathe they do, which is um, cast and fully functional, but at one twelfth scale, which in my opinion is pretty damn impressive. So, in this one, I'm going to take you through the kit that I have bought and uh, we'll uh, go through a quick unboxing and see what, uh, what the kit's like and how the castings come and just show you what it's going to involve. Here's the box as it came. And right there, PM Research. And there we go, as you can see, I have bought the milling machine kit. Now this is also a fully functional milling machine, a horizontal milling machine, that is at one twelfth scale. Now that still boggles my mind. So let's get into it. I'll turn it the best way on so I can open it without knocking the light flying. So first thing in the box, here is the, the drawings. Um, I haven't had these out of the bag yet. I will do though before much longer and have a nice long look at them. I'll bring them out and take you through some of them. And then we get to the actual castings themselves. Let's start with the most obvious one. That is the base, like the main column of the milling machine itself. It's a very nice aluminium casting. It's solid aluminium, so it's, it's still rock solid and actually a surprising amount of weight to it. You wouldn't have thought so, given that it's, it's cast aluminium, but it has got some weight to it. Here is uh, where the uh, Z, the table travel is for the Z-axis. This here is the front spindle bearing and the rear support bearing for the main spindle. And that is the nut for the feed screw for the, uh, the Z-axis. There's some very nice details cast into, his, into here as well like the uh, fake inspection door for where the uh, the motor and drive would be inside it. Well, not motor, because it's a belt-driven one, but uh, the all the drive mechanisms, gearing and all that lot would be inside it. This, though, they've been able to make it so that all that lot is outside it. So that's the main base. Over the back here, we have the two lots of uh, the pulleys, the step pulleys. Now, these are for doing the um, the speed for the drive. Now, one, uh, one lot of these, I do believe, goes up here at the top. Let me show you. From what I, can, from what I saw on their website, one lot's up here for your speed of your actual middle shaft. And the other one, I believe, is somewhere down here for adjusting the uh, cutting speed. Because, believe it or not, this machine has power crossfeed on it. A machine this small, and it has power power cross-feed travel, which is amazing. The, the things that you can do in this sort of scale is incredible. This here is the uh, the saddle. So this would sit on here. I'm not sure which orientation yet. I believe it's that orientation, which would sit on top of the knee, which is this casting here. So that's the knee casting. So that would sit on there and ride uh, that way, like that, beg your pardon. It would ride like that because then you've got these, believe it or not, are the bosses for where the gib screws. Yeah, I know, right? This is the for the gib slide adjustment and things. That's what they are. Amazing. Truly impressive. Uh, here, and then the other bits you have. This is the rear belt drive and things for, again, transferring the power to the... Um, 
to the power crossfeed. And then this itself is the table. This is the table. Um, believe it or not, I need to actually cut a keyway in there. I need to cut a, um, a T-slot with an open end, an open end, for actually clamping things to it. Because like I said, this is a functional mill. It will cut parts, which is most impressive. So that's that rather wonderful bit of uh, thing. Here we have some of the other extra little bits. Now these are little tool trays, like where you'd stand your little wrench and all that kind of stuff in. These bits of brass I do believe are for the gibs. There's also like counterweights for things. The nice thing is, is that the gears that translate the um, crossfeed, these bevel gears, come pre-machined with the set screws in, or well, with tapped for set screws anyway. That is super helpful. Um, trying to cut bevel gears yourself at home, yes it's doable, but it's a lot of work. You also get the belt drive there that would drive the actual machine and also the crossfeed. Here are the actual fasteners, including set screws and um, tapered pins, I do believe they are. They might be the shafts, I'm not sure. Uh, very tiny Allen screw. And the, the only thing I'm not so keen on this kit is the fact that they're all slotted head screws. In my opinion, it would have been much, much more aesthetically pleasing if the fasteners would have been BA or British Association standard screws. What I may do is replace them all for BA equivalent sizes because I have a load of them already. I've got thousands of different sized BAs and BA tap and die sets. It'll just make it look a bit more like an actual real product. And the final thing they include is bar stock for making all the various bits um, of different components. Again, not sure what is what at the moment, but I am almost certain I will find out. And it all comes packaged not very nicely, arrived from the States, and it was incredibly quick shipping as well. Um, it was probably, uh, I think it was three day shipping from America to the UK. Now that I am impressed with. So thank you very much to PM Research for expediting that. Um, truly wonderful. The other thing I ordered at the time though, because I don't have one, is a tapered reamer. Because on their website they list that this particular reamer is for used somewhere in the milling machine. And I, to make sure I got the right one, um, I just bought the tapered reamer at the same time, just to make sure. So that is that. Right, what I'll do is get the, uh, some of the uh, drawings out, put them on the floor, and I'll show you what they look like. And there we have it. That's two of the three sheets of drawings for this. And just to put it into perspective, pretty much all of them on here are two times scale. It's this is quite a quite the undertaking this. I'm starting to quake a bit in my boots to look at this, but uh I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to it. They are nice castings, they're very nicely cast, they're all done very nicely. Um and the all the various bits and bobs that are on it, there are this is very nicely detailed and the notes that are down here in this section, you can't read them, but the notes section down here does give a lot of good inst instructions about how how it should work and, and how bits go together and tips to put things together. So it's a very nicely done uh, set of castings and kit for this, so I'm looking forward to starting it. Um, I'm unsure as to how long the next video will be when I actually start work on it. Hopefully it won't be too long, but I will find a part in it that looks not too complicated, but not, not too easy either. And uh, bring you back for that as the first instalment. Thank you very much for taking the time to watch this video. Um, Looking forward to starting it. It's going to be a big pro project and uh, a challenge to say the least, but uh, 
I am certainly looking forward to it. Thank you once again to PM Research for all their help getting this kit here. Um, just like to say, if you like this video, please give it a like. Um, and if you really liked it and want to see more, please consider subscribing. Thank you very much, guys. Stay safe, everyone. Catch you next time.